Thanks, guys, for coming on the podcast. Yeah, hey. thanks you, for having us. You know what? I mean, this is our second time. This is yeah. a little different than the last time we did it. A little more high tech, a little bit more professional. <laughs> it's beautiful. I really wanted to go to the set. Last time it was at... Um, or is Jennifer's that? yeah Jennifer's little uh, smoothie spot or, or uh, uh, it's a health and wellness health spot. and wellness spot yeah and um it is nice I will say not driving to Marietta and you guys driving to me <laughs> it does make my life a lot easier she has actually a ranch in Marietta oh. and that house is how many a uh, little over a hundred horses oh wow yeah it's so you're a horse lady sometimes uh, that's funny I have a buddy named Doug Shepard who's a real estate agent he always says never date a girl with horses yeah <laughs> He goes, expensive. if she mentions a horse, just walk away. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're so expensive. Now. They are. I just make money off of them. Oh, now. so you yeah. just board them? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I used okay. to have one. And yeah, she passed a couple of years ago. But yeah, they're expensive. So I was like, mm, I have enough here. I yeah, can get my it's, I don't think they're so crazy. And yeah. then like people have to fly there and fly and sh- go check out horses. It's a full time. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a big responsibility. It is a yeah. big responsibility. Yeah. But I, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. What I've I actually never rode a horse before. No. Really? No, I've never ridden one before. Have you, Harry? Yes, I have. Really? We were just talking about yeah. that. I don't uh, see you as a horse guy. Um, I was a little bit younger. Um, it was in a Half Moon Bay in the Bay Area. Oh. And I used to go to uh, just on that scenic route where you get to ride horses. And I knew the the owner, so he let me ride every summer. Oh. But it just gives you this part right here when you're the first timer. Yeah. Gosh, it's, it's worse than doing squats. I was going to say, well, yeah. That's what yeah, they like say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about that aftermath. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. That machine at walk. the gym is nothing yeah, on no. horse riding. Yeah. No way. Yeah. No way. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how did you guys connect? You guys are both writers. You're both authors. You mm-hmm. both, but you always both come from like two separate worlds. How did you guys kind of hook up? Um. So this is just a recent story. Is that um I finished this new book that I'm that I'm uh that I just finished writing and it's it's about um, my relationship with God. So it's a lot of like uh, health, the health aspect of like, Mm -hmm. you know, um, just kind of bettering yourself type of book. And I remember her, our relationship, and she's all about that. Um, Her life shows it. Mm -hmm. Um, She recently got her her, uh, degree in psychology I wanted her. I wanted her to pick my brain a little bit mm-hmm. about. Um, I wanted to pick her brain about the book that I wrote and wanted to show her and get you know some feedback on it. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be fantastic. It, it's. Yeah. It, I couldn't yeah. imagine. Like that's why I love video for us because I always make the joke like. Uh, <laughs> no one watches anyways yeah. and i know it's gonna be gone in like 30 like i know that like real is gonna only last one day yeah so if i screw up like who cares you know but like to write a book and to put it out and that book be out there forever like mm-hmm. like to just think about how many people like i'd have to check with to be like does this sound good does this, yeah. i would never write i honestly i don't think <laughs> yeah. i'd ever write a book yeah so so harry like you obviously were you know last time we were on the podcast talk about your anti-bullying books like what made you jump to this different style of writing that's funny that you mm-hmm. asked oh, i was waiting for that um so you know, i kind of done these once or twice yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? so basically um as you all know we came from the pandemic and everybody was struggling um in such a way of just staying home and and just I was I was scared to die yeah. at some point, right? Because there's so many people in my, our families that was mm-hmm. like particularly mine. Um, I got into I mean a year. This is a year ago. I got into um, I was struggling a lot um, just because I wasn't doing the things that I needed to do. It's kind of like Superman getting his cape taken off. Yeah, wasn't being able to do public speaking anymore. All the printers were closed, so I wasn't printing books anymore. All the stores were closing that had my books. That affected me a lot. Um, do you worry then? You do you worry that your happiness is built off your success then? Right. Well, that's here. Here's 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 the thing. That it. I had to. I had to go under the hood a little bit. So I went to this two month retreat in Calabasas in Malibu. Not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a big deal. I right. loved it. It's called pri- vacation. Right, yeah. right. I, I had a private It's chef. like the version right. that goes to rehab. That's yeah. called vacation. Vacation. That's yeah. vacation. Right, right. I'm I going had, to rehab too. Yeah. Right. I had, a, I had a private chef. I had, I did yoga. Like, I had a Sharma. I had three months of that. I had, I had a therapy, had therapy with my yoga instructor. Mm-hmm. And, and people, they had therapy there. 
and I just understood, and then I didn't, I didn't bring my phone for two That's months. That's therapy right there. Oh my god! Oh Amazing. my gosh! Yeah. yeah. And then I had guess what? I had to write a grant. They they taught me writing exercises to help me keep the love of writing. Mm-hmm. And I had to write gr- a gratitude list every day of like what I was grateful for, but I couldn't write it twice. I love oh. this part. And yeah. He could, and the person that was my therapist that was there said, "You can't write things twice, and you have to do it for two weeks." After you mean, so you start deep diving. <laughs> yeah, because you're yeah. like, I love my family. I <laughs> right. I'm grateful <laughs> like, for this person. Right, my, the I like, well, you know, my, you know, the the things like, oh, my wife, my yeah. kids, yeah. you know, the obvious things in the yeah. first day. I was like, yeah, you're got like, this. I totally got this. Yeah. Gay to your life. <laughs> <laughs> right, Gratitude. cars, yeah. Yeah. roof over my head. You, you start calling your wife by her name. Right. You're like, no, it's the same person. That's the yeah. same person. And so after after the second week, you started to have to dig deep. Mm-hmm. I mean, dig deep. So I had to go outside. Mm-hmm. So I was. I, we did trails too. Okay, I had a big shout out for the trails that were there. We did trail retreats too. We did a lot of. Tra- I did. A lot, I walked a lot of trails. And I started to look outside and I was like, hey, no one's ever grateful for like bees that pollinate the Mm -hmm. flowers. Mm -hmm. And I started like the rocks are so beautiful. You know, I started getting really, you know, and I was being grateful for stuff that I oversaw. Mm -hmm. Uh, The blue sky that we have running water. Yeah, for sure. Electricity. And it really made me have this great deal of mindfulness it's crazy to say that because uh i think <laughs> i was in the dominican one time for work for like four months and i remember coming right. back from that just being like so grateful not to have like cement like to have hot water right yeah. Yeah. like yeah. just to have hot water like right. the 60 like you're not you don't worry about that like oh do i want the 65 or the 75 inch tv anymore you're just <laughs> like you're like i hope i have hot, hot like right. you have hot running right. water yeah right yeah you, so, don't, you don't realize until you don't have it yeah. right and i just gained this extremely intense mindfulness that i never had before in my mm-hmm. life and i started writing i started writing this book did you, have you felt like it's tapered off since that moment or about how like, like that like that mindset gratefulness uh, have you felt like it's tapered off like the farther you've been away from that oh uh, i have to do it i have to continue to do it to like to once a week ramp up yeah. i have to i have to do it and i see her once a week oh okay and i have to it's the reason it is is that she tells me like we're Ferraris in our minds, right? Mm-hmm. Like our minds are built like Ferraris, the car. Sometimes we need to open the hood and check the gaskets, man. Yeah. That's so, why I get so frustrated yeah. with, with the with like the medical world, right? I yeah. think it's so difficult to get therapy. Like 100%. it's so hard. Like mm-hmm. it's like I have Kaiser and like, you know, I've gone to therapy before, but like it's so difficult to get a therapist. Like you gotta like jump through all these hoops mm-hmm. to to get one. But if I just walked in and wanted some type of prescription, I could get it instantly. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, well, like yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the psychologists have really, they're, the psychiatrists have taken over, psycho- like the psychologists and the therapists in true therapy, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cr- definitely crippled our society. And that's- it's sad because that's, you know, I mean, there's so much more healing that we can be, um, that we can achieve, that we just, we just so easily use like our crutches of our certain labels, whether it's like anxiety or depression, it's like those are valid, yes, but they don't have to become you. You know, they, you can actually rid them through therapy. I like them. Yeah. yeah. I know. I thrive on it. I like pressure. <laughs> pressure yep. pressure yeah. just feels good, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It makes you a little nervous inside. Yeah. You know? right. It's good. But then it yeah. kind of forces you to, to like your, when your back's against the wall to kind of which direction you're going to go. Yeah. And that's really what I think six, like, you know, separates people. Yeah, mm-hmm. for is sure. W- is when it hits hard. So, so we know how Harry got sure. into this. So how so, did you get into writing these style of books? Um, so I, yeah, I transferred to her and I was intrigued. She had so much feedback for me that helped me tremendously on to go about it. And now I want her to talk about her journey on her writing, which is fabulous because she does have a degree in psychology. And she has three books that she wrote during the pandemic. So what made you? <laughs> Harry, why are you making this awkward, dude? <laughs> 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 this is weird. 
<laughs> well, yeah. this is my therapy. So so writing is the way how you escape. I guess so. My husband always says that's like your that's your true art is writing. Mm-hmm. Like back from our letters before technology. You know, we've been married twenty seven years. So our oldest is twenty six, and through our dating, we had long distance. And he said your writing was always like what super, kept you together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was just like, oh wow, this chicken write. You know, um, but I I love you know it's all forms of art once you start one it's like all of it becomes really just um fascinating you know um but writing children books like that was interesting when he and i met was because he was writing his and then i hadn't necessarily wrote mine but i worked and taught art to kids Mm -hmm. and i've always worked with kids but writing kid books for me was a way to just kind of channel my inner child and use what art that i was comfortable with and just get childlike you know, in, in my mind, my mindset and stuff and playful. Mm-hmm. So like my first book, that's what I was just telling him on the way here was, um, I have a lot. Once I start, I just go. Yeah. Um, so this one, uh, my girlfriend will remember this when she hears this too, is I was like, come kayaking with me. So Zephyr is what I wrote. So this is essentially my cat mm-hmm. swaggy. And then this is me facing fears. Um, that was the, usually every artist finds themselves in their book or their family line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but I was like, come out kayaking with me. You have to meet my friends. And she's like, okay. <laughs> so we went out and I was like, just, just like, you know, lose yourself in my world a little bit. And I was introducing her to the sea lions and the, you know, the, the, um, uh, the birds that come by and you know, there's like, okay, you have to meet Zephyr. She's like your inner muse and she faces her fears and there, you don't see a cat here, but just think of Swaggy, my cat. Yeah. And like she's, she's here and she's lives with you and, but you're afraid of the water. So what are you going to do? And mm-hmm. we're sitting there on kayaks and <laughs> she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, just lose yourself. I'm like, that's Royal and that's pilot coming in, swooping in. So I was just trying to like lose herself in the characters of the story. But for me, it was more of just like getting playful. Cause that's a really hard sometimes yeah really hard thing to do and i think it's been definitely robbed from us more so because the arts have been taken from kids and the arts is like super ingrained in my storyline but um it's taken from the kids and so we lose that sense of imagination or we get a sense of imagination and it's quickly labeled as something Mm -hmm. rather than just explorative you know so and he you know with the degree thing was super cool but that was essentially uh um uh, basically a tribute to my younger self when I graduated high school. I tried numerous times, went to numerous colleges, and then ended up uh, having a child young and, and just kind of for sick school and thought, you know, I need to, I put a lot of effort into that and the challenge and that mm-hmm. push is because I'm all over the place and so many different things with businesses and interests and such, I need to prove to myself that I could actually focus really and do one focus thing. and do yeah. one thing. Because everyone's like, you're all over the place. Well, yeah, I am, but I always come back and I tie things together, mm-hmm. always. So that was just one thing that I didn't need to do because we ran our lives off of being Not, entrepreneurs yeah. that I just wanted to do to be able to, you know, one, bring counseling and bring what art has done for me to other people. So that's kind of my next business venture is bringing um, art therapy to people without having a master's degree in art therapy held by the state hmm. that is then bound to like, you know, psych meds. Yeah. <laughs> you get a certain amount of time with your clients and then you have to shovel them off to the psychiatrist if it didn't work right away. And it doesn't work right away. I mean, life is like a complete journey from beginning to end. So you may take that trauma with you, but you learn how to, you know, PTSD is a big thing. You learn your triggers and you learn how to work with them and you learn to be okay with that pressure and that that fire that's under you. So I don't know. That, I'm a rabbit trail. <laughs> He's supposed to knock me out of that if I do yeah. that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> yeah, but good. yeah. So the degree was really one for myself to just kind of like pay respect to what efforts I did put into myself at one point and I didn't complete, and two to be able to you know satisfy whatever aspect of the world needed to see that in order for me to try and bring what I knew helped, even without that. Yeah. So, um, so what was interesting to me was psychology. Of course, that was what I started with, so I completed, and then uh, integrating theology in it. Because to me, studying anything beyond God is really not worth my time. Mm-hmm. I'm 47. I've raised three kids. I'm like, there's a lot more to life than just, you know, <laughs> it's there's a bigger picture going on. So, yeah. Is, I mean, <laughs> was it weird? What what uh, what school did you go to? 
Um, Do you agree? Well, I finished a lot of my uh, general ed just through like a local because it's just economically more practical. Of course. Yeah, to do all of your general ed through a junior college. So I did that through Palomar and um, down in San Diego. And then I went through Calvary um, Bible College with a the theology, and I finished the psychology through the. the did you actually? College. Was it all uh, all online, or did you have to go in person? Online, which uh, was awesome. I remember when I was at. Uh, it's been a long, long time since I went to it a community awesome. college, but I always remember <laughs> going to community college, and there'd be like this, like. 45 year old lady in the class i'm like what, yeah. are, you, what are you doing I here know, yeah. but now that, that i'm older now that i'm older yeah now that i'm older i'm like oh, okay that makes sense yeah i, I had a backpack and everything i was ready to go and do that but then i also had three four kids at home and i was just like no I, uh, online is awesome yeah you know, i can i know i can finish this way so because yeah. my kids will always be first and so if i go to classes and something comes up like i'm not gonna go oh sorry kids i have five yeah, and miss out. something no. no i don't miss a beat with my kids so that was number one <laughs> so how do you i mean obviously it seems like you have a lot on your plate so like and now you kind of know the psychology where like how do you balance all of these things she also owns businesses too well <laughs> <laughs> So uh, how do you, how do you balance how do you as uh, how do you balance it? Because I think that that's the one thing I think is very interesting with society now is everyone's always overwhelmed, mm -hmm. and they're all because because I think they to surround themselves with people that get overwhelmed mm -hmm. when it's like you don't even know what overwhelm looks like. Yeah, I yeah. Think, I think the mindset of that. So how do you balance the all the all the the riding and the classes and the businesses and the horses and the? <laughs> I well, I have my daughter actually. That's one you know all of my kids are on their own now and so my youngest one she's a little bit more she's training to be well she is a pilot and she's training to get like all of her commercial license and stuff and she's a little bit more in introverted so it's harder like on group text she doesn't always respond that's and, me yeah and it's like hello poke poke you know and yeah. she's like hi you know <laughs> so, i'm the worst group texter ever yeah like i'll literally like <laughs> never respond that's ever her. yeah that's like her. i hate texting more than anything else in this world like people will text me i call them and i'm like you know i'm not gonna text you I'm, yeah see i hate calling I'm i like, hate <laughs> texting because yeah. for me it's like i could literally hop on a call for 30 seconds yeah right. and all the answers would be solved right then yeah. going back and forth back and forth, just give me one text boom move it doesn't get mis misconstrued no, yes. too. oh my gosh yeah. like let's, that's true that's yeah that's a, that's like that's the other thing too yeah. it's like like i can't have serious conversations over text like yeah, serious it's, ones are harder for sure. It's definitely hard. I love phone calls. I'm yeah. a phone. I'm a phone guy. And I'm always moving around, so it's. I mean, look at my phone. It's ridiculous. It's all cracked on both sides, and it's a. I don't want to replace it because it's just going to get stuck. I got by a two, horse so or whatever. You know, you yeah. Two, smart. I have two phones. But yeah, yeah, so I balance it more so like what I was saying with her is is that's how we're connecting now is I'm like let's just put our our to do list together on a note so mm -hmm. we just kind of see each other's world. You don't have to put every. I don't need to know your world. I just want to feel connected. Yeah, and I know she likes that too so and i'm a to-dos person you know i'll have like 15 things on there and she'll have just her couple that are like weighted you know and then mine's just all the things feed the chickens do that you know? yeah. <laughs> it's everything but um but i try and look at my list and balance that with a little bit of everything that i want to achieve so mm -hmm. you know because we run a ranch and my husband runs our business that we've had for 20 something years i'm only really it's massage and cryotherapy okay i'm only really involved in it when it comes to like a redesign or a, adding on or you know something like that he primarily it's been 20 20 something years and, and kind of runs is it running itself at this point yeah we have an amazing it, teamwork teamwork mm -hmm. is huge you know for all of it from the ranch to the office we have an amazing group of people who really like our family so i think essentially building a family not just to support our vision or whatever yeah. but have it work for both a win-win for both so um yeah we have an amazing team with that but he's he does payroll and he he knows all that with the taxes and you know all that kind of stuff and that's pretty much the bottom line of what he does at this point now. Yeah. Um, but I, so I don't have that on my list unless there was something he's branching out and building and it would need me. But on all of mine from the ranch stuff to writing, I try and put like, you know, finish this storyline or um, building this counseling practice right now. So I'll do like a little bit each day of, if you just do a little bit each time, it just grows. Yeah. How about it's, the art? It's, she didn't even that, touch, I'm not, she didn't even touch, touch uh, that point. Yeah. Wait, she's do, do you mm -hmm. feel pressure to get things done by a certain time or you just kind of let them flow as for they myself go? i set my own yeah. yeah i mean being an entrepreneur you set your own goals and your own things so i i put that up there and go okay i want to you know do such and such by this date then that's my my own pressure mm -hmm. i pressure myself 
Do you, yeah. do you put weight on certain items over others? Yes. So obviously your yeah. kids are number one kids Always. and family. Everything drops. But like when it comes to like the businesses, like yeah. like do you scale out what's more important? Like we were talking before the podcast, like at the end of the day, like real estate is number one for me. Right. Like it has to be. And that's why? what that's what pays for everything. There it is. That's yeah. like <laughs> like when people go like I tell people all the time, yeah. I'm like, I'm I'm a real estate agent. I don't get paid to podcast. Yeah, like exactly. I have to sell real estate or this doesn't exist. Right. You know? Yeah. So it's like when people are like, Oh, well, like I get really mad when people like schedule a podcast and then don't show up. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, this is an hour that I could be making doing things to make income. This yeah. is literally no income making things. Right. Yeah. So so how how do you justify what go, is it just financial base like whatever is the most important thing is what makes you the most money yeah, and then you kind of go down? Yeah, I have a certain amount that I need to feel like I'm making in order to feel confident and, mm-hmm. and secure in that spot to pull away to be able to go into something else for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and that's my goal always. I think essentially I'm number one is just like my number one focus is business always and i love it i thrive on it i think that's like my true art form is building businesses and getting them i love having jobs for people yeah i think that's the thing that people don't get it's like getting jobs for people oh my gosh it's amazing it's such amazing and so hard at the same time and i'm willing to take the risk when you've had nothing like you were just saying with the you know like when you were traveling to the yeah when you've had nothing you realize how little you need really and i know that's so, like that i mean yeah. like i laugh all the time i tell people all the time like if i have to i'll sleep here yeah it like, doesn't matter i can go yeah. shower at la fitness and sleep here <laughs> yeah it won't it won't be any big I, i've lived out of suitcase half my life i can live out another it, one exactly yeah you know? it, yeah so if 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 i can deal with that then i really love the opportunity of being able to build jobs for people who aren't willing to take the risk to mm-hmm. lose everything yeah and i get that because there's a lot when you build a business, there's yeah. a lot of risk in it, and oh, that's for not sure. comfortable. For I think a lot that's of why I, I think that's why I get so annoyed with people that talk about uh, what's the word? How do I want to say this in a political correct way? Uh, yeah. That like owners make so much money and blah blah. It's like yeah, but we also take on the we take Huge on all the pressure, all the pressure. We take on all the failures. Yeah, we mm-hmm. take on we take all that on. Yeah, like we are the ones that stay up at night like what's the next like right now what's the next obviously there's a shift it. in the real estate market and we're obviously going into a recession for mm-hmm. all businesses every business owner is now sitting there debating like what, do what do? moves do yep. we make yep. who do we have to let go if we let anyone go like i think yeah. that's the thing that people don't get is like if you've never had that pressure yeah when you're a nine to five and you show up and you get told what to do. Yeah, you get to go home and leave the job. You get to go it's, home and just completely check out. I don't out. even understand what that would be like. And I'm okay not knowing that because that's not how I'm built. Well, I think I'd be bored. Yeah, I, uh, terribly bored. I'd be terribly <laughs> bored. Harry, yeah. was it scared for you to jump out of your anti-bullying books to a whole new style of writing? Um, absolutely. Um, I feel like he's. I feel like he's a musician. Like I feel like <laughs> I know right? with his glasses on. I feel like he's like like. Bust you know, out the piano. Yeah, like all of a yeah. sudden he's Prince over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, was, I will say, Harry, you're the first person. I was a rapper. You're the first person to ever wear sunglasses, and I know why you're wearing them, but you're the first person that's ever worn them on here. I don't think I could ever interview like famous people that wear sunglasses all the time. So, anyways, yeah. go on. So, was it an, was it, you, you was were it, a rapper? Yeah, yeah, I was a rapper. Yeah. I mean, he knows that. Yeah. yeah. I used to write a lot of like, yeah. You know, Debate but writing's writing. writing. You know writing, what I mean? So for yeah. you, like, was it a weird transition to start writing that book that is so, especially you know that something works and jumping into a space that is the unknown of your writing skills? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it, because there's a lot of comfortability because sure. I'm really known for anti bullying. I mean, I was in different magazines and, but. I mean, writing is writing, like you said. Yeah. Um, I just love writing, mm-hmm. and I love helping people, but I also love sharing like my relationship with God. Yeah. Um, that last book was me finding God. Uh huh. Um, to know that you know I rely on His strength and uh, just a, a lot of things because it's it's a it's a two sided book. It's it's two books in one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called the Dark Cloud, and then my friend the Sun. It's clearing the dark cloud to like my friend the Sun, and the Sun represents God of me finding myself what the true value is what currents what true currency is 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 my spirituality and, and me being accepting me for who i am mm-hmm. and being just not being slave to like a lot of the things that i was slave to in the world um and so i was letting go of that and i wanted to share it with people and i did it through poetry mm-hmm. and so 
it it it's it reminds me so much of the giving tree and mm -hmm. i just i love it so much because a five-year-old could read it and my dad could read it and have a different and perceive it different or have a different perspective yeah based on where where you're at right. in life yes it's like we went to church on sunday it's so funny i'm yep. like oh my god that's a this and then my girlfriend was like oh my god it says this i'm like two people in the same room hearing the same thing <laughs> their Com perspective totally perspective different. completely yeah. different <laughs> right you right. know what i mean and yeah. i'm like you got that from that really <laughs> and you say you're religious yeah, that yeah. Sense. Yeah. you know what yeah, i mean Were yeah, you, yeah. was he sleeping i said yeah. what are you talking about it's that's like slow. hearing something and going oh they need to hear it when really like oh shoot i probably should I, that. well that's that that's the funny part about it is it's like you're sitting there and you're yeah. like oh my god he's talking to me and yeah. then the person like, oh my god he's talking to me and oh my god like it's like <laughs> how is he talking to everyone yeah. this doesn't make any sense yeah. <laughs> So yeah. moving, so for you, like, is now, like, obviously you say you're still going to be writing anti bully books, but, like, which, I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but which one do you feel more passionate about right now? Um, I, 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 I feel. He's like, I don't want to answer that question. No, I feel, I feel both because yes. it's, it's two-sided, right? Mm -hmm. Because this one, I'm actually, I'm getting published from a, a worldwide renowned publisher, right? And then uh, that one is my company, yeah. right? I grassrooted all my anti-bullying books. I published. I publish all my anti-bullying books, mm -hmm. and it's a, And I I feel like they're two different avenues, but they're this. They give me the same joy. Got How it. do you love one yeah. child over another? I don't have children. Oh. <laughs> I have two dogs. Well, there you go. Like, how do you, and those you know? dogs are cute, by the way. Bro, those, they're so cute. Bro, you should bro, see listen, them. if you don't got, if you don't, if you don't think Corgi are the best dogs in the world, yeah, like, they're we ain't so friends. Cute. They are so. Cute. Dude, you know what's crazy is like my my girlfriend has has three kids and she wants yeah. like she's like I love I want as much and I'm over here like can we get a Corgi farm and like I, want, I want ten dogs and she's yeah. like all right fine for every kid you get two dogs, two dogs. I'm yeah, like all right we'll we'll be all right at that. Um, so how did, so what made you guys start the ranch? Was that just kind of by accident or um, one yeah, my youngest she picked up horse riding and liked it. She was doing vaulting cuz she's too young for riding and she really loved horses from the beginning and then ironically once we actually got our first horse, she has had nothing to do with them. <laughs> so now I have them all and I laugh all the time. I'm like, "Thanks, Gara. Look at all yeah. these, you know." <laughs> But um, yeah, they just ended up becoming a really good business plan for when I was, I stepped away from teaching art in order to kind of focus in, well, in doing art. I hadn't done art in a while and really started creating. I, have, I just was like giving constantly mm -hmm. and I wasn't like giving to myself. So I just kind of needed to find my signature trade in, in that. And, um, and I did because it's total therapy. So uh, I ended up coming up with the fire art that I it kind of coined i think at one because there was no fire art on mm -hmm. there um but using fire and alcohol like uh moon uh moonshine vodka you know all that kind of stuff and lighting that on fire and moving the pigments and stuff around and um doing jewelry with it and just pieces and for me it was to get to that point was very therapeutic because yeah. it was just taking you can with recovery in general you know whether you're from addicts or were an addict where you uh, just take it and instead of like dumping it down the toilet, like put it to use and have it give to others. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't necessarily struggle with any substance abuse, but I was around it a lot. And yeah. so that to me was just kind of like place it on something and make it useful. And um, so spirit fired art became kind of my thing. And when I when I got that and I was like, OK, that's it. That's my your thing. That's my thing. And I love I love playing with fire. I love, you know, just kind of like teetering that line all the time. You know, yeah. you want to jaywalk? Sure. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where do you normally sell your art out? Is it like Etsy, art fairs? Well, or do you just kind of say like, this is for me. And if someone wants to see it on my Instagram and buy it, then hit me, send me a I, GM. She has a website. Oh, you website. Plug, you could plug your website. Plug a website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, madtherapy.org. Yeah. Um, but yes, no, I... Um, in the beginning, it was right before COVID is when I ended up kind of coming up with that. And so I actually started connecting with distributors of different, Got you it. know, um, one of my best ones was Mezcal and he would ship it to Tijuana because he was in Oaxaca. Mm -hmm. So we would go across the border, go pick up our shipment of free Mezcal and then drink a little and play a little, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think so, it'd be a super cool like show to do with people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, like a dinner. 
like yeah. a dinner and an art at the same time and like with a little you're, bit of fire with, that's yeah. what i'm saying like you're doing <laughs> yes. dinner yeah like people are eating but that's watching a you that's yeah. a do a little, that's why the warehouse is coming all right that's a i'll great be there concept. When the, why do you think the warehouse is coming <laughs> he's opening a warehouse by the way yeah, yeah. where it's a, uh the plan is so i'm gonna leave this place and i think i think my lease is up in a year and a half so i really want to open a warehouse because i think that it would be such an opportunity for the people I know because how many times you want to throw somewhere and you don't have a space and you're like, <laughs> you know, and the yeah. space costs you so much money. You're like, oh, man, if I only didn't have that yeah. overhead. So I was like, okay, like I, I like, I want to have, if you obviously you're in my office right now, like it's not a real estate office, it's more like studios. Right. Yeah. So it's like, I want to open a warehouse and I want to have studios inside like the office area of the warehouse. And then the back warehouse, I just want to have like a place where people can come and hang out and there's going to be like TVs in the wall and then we can throw events nice. there. And then I have a client of mine who sells uh, like high-end golf simulators. I'm a golfer. So we're going to put one in there and then he's going to bring nice. his clients there. Nice. So And wow. then like we can bring like food trucks and throw events so and things cool. like yeah. that. Yeah. So for me, I just think that like, Community I, gathering. yeah, I think yeah. like the warehouse look, like people go to breweries now mm -hmm. where houses so i right. think it's like acceptable yeah right. um mm -hmm. and i just feel like the big open space will just allow us to experience more things yeah yeah you know and gather more people together and gather and more people together and help more people mm -hmm. and like i mean there's a that's lot what of people need is exactly to be together to yeah. get together i yeah. think that's uh i think that's the one thing we definitely learned from covid it was like you it, we're meant to be in yeah. tribes or whatever you want to call it exactly mm -hmm. yeah human contact is important super important yeah. and i think that's the sad part is that we're losing that uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah you, you've never been more available to get to most people but you're you're less connected with more people than ever right you yeah. know like exactly. i could i could text anyone anywhere in this world but how many people do i truly know yeah, exactly yeah the yeah. irony very true <laughs> yeah are you are you guys yeah. are you heavy on social or no um i saw you posting this weekend about yeah. some events and stuff yeah, I, you know, I hit or miss. Like, I'm not, I'm kind of private about my friendships and stuff just because I don't like, well, you hung out with this person more than you oh, hung yeah. out with me. So I don't really do too much of that so much every once in a while. Mm -hmm. My photographer friends are great because they've always got the camera in our face. So yeah, I never, it, I, I'm really bad yeah, at that. <laughs> it looks like I hang out with more of them than I, not because they're so good at that, mm -hmm. which I super love, but because I'm not. But um, yeah, I'm, we do events like at the ranch, we just did a wedding. And then at my house, it was a double booking, which was crazy. But at our house that we live at, I did a um, 16th birthday party mm -hmm. and on that same day, so I had my daughter, my other daughter's girlfriend watch the house while we were over running the wedding and so I was like, all right, I'll get a little social. It just depends on what mood I'm in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm pretty private and political and sometimes I'm really social and, you know, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do live. I do have a social life, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, Harry, Harry, you're not that heavy on social. Well, I'm, I used not to now. be. Yeah, but um, not anymore. Not after my little one year. Can you just, do you just like, do you just need a mental break from it? Um, Absolutely. It's where you're, you're might be talking the most opposite person. So it's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I get why people use it and I'm, I'm not a get, uh, it's just not me personally for you it's not where you're at right now right yeah and it's definitely you ha it's like a drug you have right. to very, be very yeah. careful with it you and, and you know what though people like you or you they use it for the greater good yeah um you do it for your business but then you're also doing it for inspiration mm -hmm. and inspiration for other people yeah it, but it's very it's very difficult like i don't think no. people realize like when the more content you put out and then you like don't get the traction that you feel yeah. it's very dangerous to walk down the road do i make content to get the likes and the comments right but you know and then that's changing who you are Absolutely. for people that don't even for and that approval for yeah. approval but and right. that's a dangerous it's line to walk down dangerous but what's yeah. really interesting is when you go seek after that you de you definitely lose yourself in it and you don't realize how many people actually appreciate your authentic self even though they're not liking and responding See, i think that's the interesting part they people come do not later realize going, thank you and it's people like don't oh wow i didn't people know do you not even cared people you know? <laughs> do not realize like i tell it all the time like i have had more clients hit me up about buying and selling their houses or whatever they have never liked yeah that has yeah. never commented yeah. on something yeah. right. i didn't yeah. even know they followed me yeah i had no <laughs> clue yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, oh shoot, you very were, true. You know, yeah. very true. But yeah, I think it's thing. definitely a tricky, a very, very slippery slope that I don't think people walk that fine line enough. Yeah, that's something I always think of. Um, is when I see someone post something, I'm just like, why are you posting this? Yeah, like literally, yeah. like like someone dies, their body's still warm, and they're like posting like, oh, so and so died. I'm like, why don't you like wait a like. 
yeah. wait a week yeah. you know what i mean yeah like yeah. no one needs to know that your grandfather or grandma just died just, in yeah. that moment yeah like right. let yourself feel and feel it yeah 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 Yeah. which just shows the comfort level is more it is not found so much within one another and their their support group that is more of just right here i did a really neat um i was going through a season in my life where i was choosing to let go of somebody super important to me and and so i kind of in order to cope with that and not just lose my shit um i did a series of uh it's on my social media of like painting myself and i needed to feel so i like had I did this water, fire, nature, like, you know, earth color kind of a thing, and I became that. So <laughs> I yeah. like decorated myself like a big bush and hid in the bushes, and then there's my one eye, but actually turned out really cool. And then I had, I'm sure, like, my husband loved this. He got to throw a big, huge bucket of water on me while I had all this crap in my hair and a really cool dress, but the color and the, like, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, um, Um, composition was super cool and my son took the pictures and that was like feeling the water and just like feeling the intensity of things I wanted to feel instead of go numb because we have a tendency to disassociate yeah and um that was a very for me it was just like whatever you mean you could literally like have something blow up in front of me and I could just go don't care you know and I don't want to be that way so Mm -hmm. I have to be intentional to not and um but I did this other one after oops sorry after the me series part then I went into how how I realized how much effort I put into this other person who really didn't put any put effort into you, yeah. me. So I had a, a group of people come like, just all come to my house. And so they all got and there's like 15 of us and two in the center. I had these big, long color scarves that I gave to everybody and two people in the center. And all the color of ourselves was going out to all these gray people. And the person who was standing right in front was like looking at him like, hello, I'm right here, but this one's just surrendering everything they have to people who don't even really care, yeah. which is like social media too. For sure. So they're just extending everything they have, but the one who loves them, the one who's there for them is not seen because their head is down extended and fully just like have given out everything. I don't, Honestly, if I, if I didn't have what I, if I didn't do the job I did, I wouldn't even have it. I don't, and I don't like it at all. Like what? if I did not have what I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would not have Social, social media, media social at all media. Yeah. yeah i have yeah. no desire to go on it yeah i have no i don't scroll on it it's really not my life like yeah. you might see like but no one knows who i'm dating no one knows yeah. anything's no, going you, on you my keep life keep it separate Dude, pri- that's separate. why i appreciate yeah. yours your private life no my one private's has no, private and yeah. that's that like when, yeah. m- you might maybe see one or two posts a year of me and her just like my birthday that's maybe good. her birthday that's maybe good. but like holidays i'm never on my phone on holidays i don't yeah. post on holidays like christmas is my day you don't need to see a picture of my family in front of a tree yeah. like <laughs> or my turkey <laughs> or my turkey have, you, know? you know what i mean <laughs> like that's not gonna matter so th- so that's like for me it's like walking that balance and i think it's mm-hmm. interesting when people go like oh i don't go on social media. i don't want people i'm like do you think people know my life yeah. no but it's that balance you have to yeah. check yourself a lot and and when you are in business and you run your own business you need to be you need to be a- available to exactly and, and mm-hmm. real to people you have you to know? be exactly yeah I, I, that's always been my goal is i want people to meet me and be like you're exactly the person i thought yeah you yeah know? yeah for sure you have this uh, ability to be very authentic and she does as well i just that's don't think i i, I just don't think were. i don't i just truly like don't care right. like yeah. i really don't give an yeah. f yeah like i really <laughs> don't like it's as i guess it's a superpower more, more. yeah i really don't care yeah. like Talk, hate me, love me, talk crap about me, hate my right. videos, love my videos. Like, yeah, I look at it as this: dude, I do more for other people than you do in your whole lifetime. Yeah. I do in a month. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> come yeah. at me, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if yeah. you think I'm an idiot, <laughs> yeah. prove me wrong. Then. Yeah. I always sell that to agents. Like they'll yeah. talk crap in my videos. Like in the comments, I'm like, well, then make your own debating what I'm saying, yeah. and then I'll see if you're right. But yeah. no, I don't want to do that. It's so much easier to sit on the sidelines. 100%. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think I think I just... Get in, the, get in there and play. And and it does, sometimes I wish I could turn that off. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, sometimes I like, maybe put my foot in my mouth just because I just don't care. But because I also don't care when people say to me. Yeah. Right? Like if I'm having a conversation, yeah. with, nothing you're going to say is going to offend me. Yeah. Like you could say anything. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Because like, <laughs> that's your opinion. That if I had the same things happen to me in your life that happened to you, I'd probably feel the same way you do. Yeah, that's a great yeah. characteristic yeah, to have. Like is. it's like when people want to talk about like anything political. Like I don't know anything about this subject because nothing's ever that's never affected me in my life. So how can I have an opinion on something that's never happened to me? I don't know. I don't know that. Yeah. I don't know how I would feel about it. But if something did happen, then maybe I'd feel a different way. Yeah. I don't know. 
Yeah. And, and I know, think that's where I feel passionate. Sorry. Yeah. About no, no, no. Is, is that is <laughs> once you actually have like experienced a little of something of it, then it's like, that's where the passion starts coming. Well, in. yeah. I mean, it's just like, it. I grew up, like I tell you all the time, I grew up in middle-class America. My parents are still together. My par- I never saw my parents drink. Mm-hmm. They didn't do any of that. I lived a really good lifestyle. So I don't know what it feels like to be the person that grew up in a separate household. Parents are divorced, abusive dad, or abusive mom, alcohol. I don't know that. Yeah. So how am how I supposed to have an opinion? How am I do I have an yeah. opinion about that? Yeah. I have no clue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have no idea how I can judge you if you're in a different place in life because you came up that way. Yeah. And right. I'm not saying that's an excuse, but would I be in the same position right. that you were in if I was there? Right. right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just like I think uh just like with people that are like super rich, it's like, yeah, you're rich. Like you grew up in money. Yeah. Like congratulations, yeah, exactly. you won the lotto. Yeah. You better be successful. Yeah. You don't know? piss it away. But yeah, don't piss it away. You've been gifted yeah. something. Like yeah. it's like when people are be like, good with it. It's like in real estate when people are like, yeah, my whole family's been in real estate. Congratulations, you yeah. have a head start on me. Thank you. Yeah. So when did you, Harry? I never, I don't remember this. Uh, and maybe we talked about it last time. I don't remember. But like, when was the moment you were like, I can write? Was it rapping? Was it the yes. raps? Yes. Because um, I can definitely not write. Like, I think, like, a sixth grader can write better than me. Like, I literally think God grammarly. Perfect. Um, love my life. But was it rapping? Or was it, it, was, kinda... it was It was rapping. Um, my, I was very, very, I would say. What blessed. kind of rap were you? Like, if you had to, like, if you had to, like, call I, out. I wrote, like, um, I don't know if you guys were familiar with Bay Area stuff. The only Bay Area rapper I know is a guy named T-Bone. <laughs> this is how conversation we had before. Yeah. But like, okay, so like, you know E40 at least? Yeah, I know E40, yeah. Okay, like his genre. Of I rap, got it. And I wrote all his artists, like the artists he had, I wrote some of the raps. Yeah. Um, you just couldn't spit the bars? Oh, I could. Yeah. I just, I even taught him how to rap, like the style to rap it. If it was on a certain beat, I would tell him what tempo I wanted. To go at it, yeah. And my partner, who is like your partner here, or like you guys. Yeah. He was my engineer, so he knew how to do to all work the that beats, and yeah. do everything. Yeah. He, was, he was a genius. What years was this? This was from 96 to 2007. Got it. Oh, 2006. Yeah. It was huge. Um, just, I was in high school. <laughs> 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 Sorry, bud. <laughs> As were his <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I was in high school. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. All right. So it was, it was huge. And so what made you get out of it? Um... I got I got married. Oh, had kids. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they don't want me in videos. Oh, for sure. With women. Yeah, of course. Uh, all this other lifestyle. Of, it's a hard. That's a. I mean, that's that's something you got to worry about. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Stay in the studio at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's where. That's when they. Tend you have to, to do go. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, when they when they want to record, it's you know, whenever they want to record. Right, and they're smoking. Yeah. Doing all kinds of stuff in front of you. And those temptations, I, I just... No, none of us are strong enough. Right. And I just... I mean, you hang around with barbershop so long, you're bound to get a haircut. Yeah. yeah. And I took that to heart. And I was like, I got to protect myself. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that all the stupid Instagram memes are the, literally the secret sauce of the world? Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, it's like everyone wants to know what the secret sauce is. And it's like, just go just on Instagram reading, and yeah, look at motivational yeah. quotes. And it's literally like... Like but there's your therapist. It matters, yeah. who, it matters who you surround yourself with. Yeah. Check. Check. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's sure. gonna it work hard. Check. Yeah. Be ready for the roller coaster. Check. Okay. Cool. Like yeah. I don't need anything else. <laughs> Save. And but we, it, all, we all have the same game yeah. board. You know. It's, it's all, like, the all the same. Yeah. yeah. It's all the same. It's, it's so same. interesting that it's like it's what that's the one thing I have loved about doing this podcast is you know I have people like you or I'll have like real estate people in here and it's like literally the same. It's all the same yeah. stuff. Like work hard, have the right people around you, and then when things go oh, bad, your obstacles. when things go yeah. bad, power through them. Power like through. literally, like that that's is it. like, that's it. <laughs> three so, steps. There's three, three steps step to rule. success. And like, I think that's the other thing too is also like, what I'm also noticing lately is like, when we all think there's like that level and then you get there and then it's, the, not, it's yeah. not, it's the success, <laughs> the success when you actually get there doesn't make you feel as good as you think it's gonna yeah. be. Yeah. And that's something yeah. humbling to people who have never gotten there before, that's never felt that before. They don't yeah. process it. Yeah. It's just like if you go, you know, you're you're hiking and you're hiking a huge hike and you gotta get to the top. It's like then you get up there and it, you spent all day doing that and you get up there and you're like three minutes at the top. You're like, all right, let me turn around. Yeah, I'm done. No. <laughs> yeah, it's like the I think, journey was where you got the the, the lesson. Yeah, I think sure. that I mean and then qu- the question is like what is success? 
It's something yeah. that's unmeasurable. Yes. Yeah. What is success and what does that mean to you? I mean, and I think that's why you can always be successful. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, even if it's just getting out of bed and making your bed just at trying. seven thirty. Going like I've been it. I've been getting up at four thirty. That's been a big thing for me. I've been getting yeah. up at four thirty for a week now. That's I'm feeling success. great. Wow. That's success. Yeah. <laughs> I love getting up at four thirty. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so moving forward, so like obviously you're all over the place. Yeah. We, we'll check that. We'll move you off to the side. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? You know, that will that'll take too long. Next. So, yeah. next yeah. I'll move down. <laughs> um, so like what is the process Harry the book is at right now? So it's like you're getting it's getting published. Right. You've uh, you've run it. Has it already been like? Is it done? Like, my, or is it being proofread? Is it being like? Or my so my half is completely done. You're done. I'm I'm done. So we're waiting for the illustrator, and that's it. And they 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 take control of it. They do um, everything. How many pages is it? It's twenty six pages. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. I can read that. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's a quick. It's it's meant to be one of those quick books that you see, yeah. like you know, a poetry book. I, I hate, I mean, all the poetry yeah. books, but what, how do you guys do feel about health and wellness books? Like the overall picture of it. What are your thoughts on, on that industry of books? Um, I guess it just depends on where they're guiding, you. guiding you from. Yeah. yeah. I just get yeah. so annoyed. They're like 200 pages. I'll read all of it. And there's yeah. like literally two points. And I'm like, dude, this could have been a <laughs> chapter. Get, yeah, exactly. There's yeah. so much fluff to them. It's yeah. like, give me the two chapters. Health and wellness is really just quite simple. It's just, you know, respond that's why i get tired of read like i go through modes of reading books and i get so tired i'm like i just wasted like a week yeah just reading this book to get one maybe maybe one thing if that where that could have been yeah 40 pages yeah right absolutely eat healthy move yeah sleep well you know yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. move your body so so what are you doing right now are you like the book's done so you're writing another book i am okay um my fourth installment for my five book series is is coming out it's called cyrus the cyber bully okay and that's oh you've been working on that one for <laughs> a long last time. time i saw you and then i'm writing my fifth one it's called not so king kari that's f- about a kid that's born on the other side of the tracks mm-hmm. he doesn't have the jordans to wear he doesn't have the um polo to wear to mm-hmm. school so he gets bullied for that and that's coming out that's coming out in two years Mm-hmm. And so I'll be completed with the five book series, and then I'm going to move on to another set of the books that I'm I'm working on now. Could you imagine nice. if I kind of wish I went to school with a uniform? To be honest, yes. Oh yeah. Because there's no, no there's yeah. no there's no separate. No one knows. Well, Nobody my daughter knows. goes to Linfield. Yeah, Christian, and I'm ecstatic about it. The only way you could tell is you look at their shoes, and it should, and that's <laughs> the thing too. It should just yeah. be all the same shoes, right? Right. Then and you don't have dress code. Then you have, you have no dress. You have no, I, and you have no different of what, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Economic, economic yes. police, anyways. Mm-hmm. I love, I love that, and I, I just because they get into the materialism that. Earth, oh, for that, sure, that's or, something we're fighting right now with my my girlfriend's kids. It's right. like, dude, like. That fifty dollars shirt versus a twelve dollars shirt. There's right. no different to it. Trust I mean, me. Right. We had this conversation. I mean, go to Ross. You find mm-hmm. great stuff oh, yeah, there. Great stuff. Or um, Norsham Rack. There's yeah. some great stuff there. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to go to like you know Neiman Marcus. I mean, not yeah. that I'm you know talking down on them. It's great if you have the money. It's great if you love that place. But what I am saying is that you can find it I, at Ross. Yeah. Right? And I, yeah. <laughs> but then, but here's the question: right. as, as society, where do we learn that that stuff's important? I mean, as a child, you don't know the difference between J's and non-J's. No. Yes. Yeah. No. You, you have no clue the difference. Social it's, media now. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's projected from from the community or environment mm-hmm. that you grew up in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like people get bullied. When I used to have pro wings back, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but pay less, pay less shoes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People would be like, you know, when I was in fourth or third grade, and be like, look at his, look at his uh, pro. They call them pro wings. I remember mine was skate shoes. <laughs> I remember when I first got my first real set of skate shoes. I think like sixth grade. I thought yeah. I was like the b- <laughs> most badass. Ever. Yeah, <laughs> the confidence you Dude, have. I, you know, you're like, that's yeah. that's the only thing I believe in anything. If whatever you're buying or whatever, if it gives you more confidence, then yeah. you should totally do it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I wanted to make a book like that. Yeah. Because there's yeah. there's there's times in in my own life that I got bullied in it. There's times I, now. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I have to worry like what car I drive. As dumb as that sounds. Absolutely. But like, oh, well, yeah, because you're pulling up and you're giving people rides to yeah, places. Yeah. The other places. Yeah. But mm-hmm. then here's the other issue that people don't realize, especially in Riverside, is like, is there such thing as too nice of a car? Oh uh, yeah. Right. You right. have to find, find this that, balance yeah. uh-huh. that like <laughs> yeah. what like that is something I do struggle with is a lot of my clients. 
I I do well for my life and I take on a lot of stress and but I definitely think I've earned it. But like I have to be very careful. Like mm -hmm. what do I perceive hey. yeah. to my followers without losing yourself. Without losing mm -hmm. where it's like and the crazy part, like I drive a Range Rover. But the only reason I bought the Range Rover for tax reasons, but none of my followers know that I bought it for a 179 deduction. Yeah, that has to be over 6,000 pounds, and <laughs> yeah. I only did it yeah. for the tax, and so I really smart. don't care about it because I drove yeah. a cargo van for two well, years. Well, that's exactly right. same thing. I love thing. that cargo van. I know I sold it, man. You did? Yeah, yeah I sold yeah, it. You had your picture all over that. Thing, I sold my. Man. I used to drive a Sprinter van everywhere, <laughs> with my face on the side of it. Yeah. yeah, but the only reason. I, okay, so it's all business. I got yeah. I, that was a business move when yeah. I bought it, and then I got rid of it because. We obviously know in March, or no, this is June 2022, gas prices are insane. Yeah. So I got rid uh, of the diesel mm -hmm. and then I made seven grand off of it. So yeah. it was a strictly a business decision. Yeah. Right. And then I bought the Range Rover for a business decision. As a business owner, so much of what you purchase is for that reason. It's all business. Yeah, it's, it's all business. business. So it's not how much you make, it's how much, you, it's yeah. how much taxes you, you don't can, pay. Exactly, yeah. 100%. And yeah. then they're, oh, you just buy, you know, you have this property, you have these cars. And it's like, it's business. I have it's to buy. So, I have, so I can I'm a, keep a, a roof over my head. That or I'm going to have to give it to the government. Employed. I'm yeah. going to give it to the government or I got to buy something. I'll just buy something. Or give it to my family, yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, that's the thing. I don't care about the Range Rover. Like, I actually, I was very, honestly, it was so funny. Me and my dad went car shopping because I didn't know I was going to buy that. And I was like, I never felt more unexcited to drive $100,000 cars. Yeah. Like, literally, yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, we went to another, we went to Porsche. Then we yeah. went to another dealership, another dealership, another dealership. And I was like, this is, I, I would have thought five years ago, if you would have told me five years ago I would be dr driving this. these kind of cars, <laughs> I'd be super excited. There. Yeah. Literally, I was like, oh, let's go to the next one. My dad's yeah. like, do you like this one? I'm like, it's whatever. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Like, it doesn't even, I don't yeah. even, I don't yeah. know if, like, what is it, a Rolls Royce? I don't I don't yeah. know what it is. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, cra it's crazy to think that way. Um, I like to piggyback on that point. Sure, that piggyback on it. <laughs> But I was in, Cal you know how I was in Calabasas, and I'm hanging around with all these guys. That we were with the Kardashians. Have, no, but these guys have money, right? Which slightly I started watching, but that's not necessary. But they <laughs> have, they, they're. I know how much they make, and I know where they live on, right? They live on where the, the um, or like where his property is. He parks his boat in the backyard. Mm -hmm. He's my uh, really good friend Jeff, um, and his neighbors are share. Like <laughs> for the summer, yeah. Our yeah. share, some guy from Motley Crue, and the Nabisco, the guy that owns Nabisco, right? Yeah. But he sold his shares. I see in their driveway just to see what they drive. They drive regular cars. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Shares rolling like a a, a Volt or a Chevy Volt or Here's something. Here's the like. thing: they don't <laughs> want the like right. the, the, the car yeah. brings attention that they don't want. Right. Don't want. The Nabisco guy is rolling in like a truck. Yeah. I know he he's worth millions. And so it, it kind of humbled me because I was into that. You know, mm -hmm. I got the, you know, 750 with the yeah. rims and yeah. the black rim, black it all out. I have all those cars. I have I have it. I grew up like that. But in hindsight, I'm like, I want to roll in a Prius or, you know what I mean? And, and be humble like that. So just looking at them and seeing what they drive, I'm like, I think they know they have it. They don't need the confidence built by right? the car. No, yeah. no, yeah. because yeah. they're... Even let's let's go with the guy that's the third rich, richest guy in the world. Um, what's his name? Well, it goes uh, Elon Musk is right now. Yeah, Jim and Bezos, then, but the guy that Bill handles Gates. all the financing. Oh, and, uh, Warren Buffett. Yeah, Warren Buffett. He rolls in the Oldsmobile to this day. Yeah, and he drive and he lives in Omaha, Nebraska. Right, still. and he lives in the same house. The same house that he got for, for six, sixty-seven thousand yeah. when it was new, and now it's yeah. worth millions. But yeah. it's just. You goes see, to and he goes to McDonald's every morning. Right, yeah. and you just see what they do, and you're like, wow, that's humbleness. But mm -hmm. but the crazy part about it is, is in this day and age, right? Like, you mm -hmm. take, like, I was laughing because I have started watching the Kardashians. I blame you, Jessica, for that. <laughs> but anyways, like, their life right. is built online. And right. the flex of what that image is, mm -hmm. Cher doesn't need, Cher grew up without social media, so she doesn't need to be right. flashy. Or right. validated. Or validated, <laughs> or anything like that. Yeah. It's like, the worlds that we live in that we have to figure out like because the moment you de like that's going to be interesting this recession we're going through mm -hmm. i'm very interested to see this i was young when the last time we had the last one but like now that we're all online mm -hmm. and you're not going to be able to maybe you do lose your car mm -hmm. maybe you can't go on those vacations maybe what do you then post i'm hoping mm -hmm. This is, I am all over the place, but I'm hoping. This is like a clear, a clear out. A yeah, cleanse. this is, yeah, this is, this is like, yeah, this, I always, this is like my last pinnacle thing here. I had three 
good solid things that I've built for myself. Mm -hmm. And well, two, I'm speaking this other one into existence. Now that I've got the degree to satisfy whoever yeah. needs that aspect is the counseling with art therapy. Because essentially art is dead. We can't shock the world anymore with art. Mm -hmm. And when we look at what they're trying to do, they meaning just, you know, like gas prices and food shortage yeah. and, you know, just our economy crippling. The arts is definitely on the list for trying to um, essentially just wipe it out because it makes usually the biggest impact during hard times yeah. because it's a voice. But so many of the artists have sold themselves to being relevant to society mm -hmm. that essentially art is dead and yeah. Bo Burnham did a great you know art is dead thing and he just saturated the website or the Google with it which is awesome but um but it, it that's where I want to build my program off of and I have like the whole madtherapy.org there's my plug um <laughs> for it is because I want to bring the arts to the people and let them use that as the true therapy so when we do hit a recession and we have nothing that we find our sense of wonder again in the little things. Our, our true worship is appreciating the bees pollinating the flowers and our, you know, the, mm -hmm. the simple things of mm -hmm. life that that mm -hmm. becomes more of our platform of prestige rather than trying to, you know, things that just lose value the moment you buy it. Cause really we haven't been trained economically whatsoever through our education system so true value is not found in something that you purchase and it loses right when you take it off the lot you know whoa that shot of my range rover <laughs> that's a shot at the range sorry love no. it but <laughs> no but it's true that right you know? like it's it's interesting like um i was talking to my buddy of mine yesterday i was like oh I did that and the other and he's like mm -hmm. you know what the one thing i'll say to you adam i'm like what's that he goes you invest so much money in yourself with courses and books and masterminds and this and that. I'm like, cause you're dude, the art piece. I'm the art piece. I'm like, 100%. dude, if I'm not knowledge is what has gotten me to here. So where can yeah. knowledge take me? And, and knowledge is not duplicated. Right. right. No right. one can duplicate what's in my brain. Right. right. They can wear the same shirt, the same watch, yep. the same shoes, the same look, but the they're same, not you, but they're not me. Yeah. And yeah. so knowledge is what I think when things get hot, tough, people always look towards the expert. And above that is wisdom. Yeah. There's your peak. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, Adam, that's the book I'm reading right now too. Yeah. Adam Wise has, the fuck up is a great book oh, I'm reading last night. Sorry. Uh, Adam has been an inspiration to me. <laughs> Stop, I, bro. I, I, I talked. Remember, I talked. Uh -huh. Told you about him. He actually has. Um, he getting all this. What you see here, the offices, the real estate, the podcast, everything. He has actually. Can I? Yeah, can sure, I say? Okay. He has. He has dyslexia. Yeah. And so he did all this success and having so so, so much success. That's why I, that's things. why I envy you guys. Like, right. I can't even write a, a, a I can't even write a graph a, a correct uh, Instagram text a like text like I have to use Grammarly to go through and like because that's a self conscious of mine where it's just like I don't want to sound I don't want to look weird and the funny part about it is now there's no reason to stop you right, right. You did, you like did, you didn't like I like you. I have a my one of my big mentors was uh, a special ed teacher in high school he just retired but like I would go speak to his classes I'm like dude you have no excuse now yeah. like you have Siri yeah. like you can just yeah. speak into your phone and yeah. she'll tell you what right. she'll do it for you yeah. like there's no excuse yeah. now right. and maybe yeah. and that's why I like doing video because I can just get up there and talk right and just be fine with you it. You don't have to worry about I don't, what's on paper. I don't yeah. matter what's on paper. Yeah. It's like, I'll just put it on that. Yeah. And I think that's the way you have to hack through. You have to learn what your weaknesses are mm -hmm. and make your strength you'd be overcoming those weaknesses. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Your strength has to be so strong that no one think about the weakness. 100%. Yeah. 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 And I, your weakness, you can't have a crutch for it. The moment you have a crutch for it, you just fail yourself. I don't even yeah. worry about it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's obviously not stopped me. I think that you just, it's allow you to stop you it's if you want to. Yeah. The limitless, the yeah. limitless mindset you have. Yeah. Well, and I think it's like, dude, I, you know, I went from like, you know, it's hard because in this world or whatever world with mental health and stuff like that, like you can go down those gurus mm -hmm. right. that are really just scam artists. And like, it's very interesting. Like my, one of my biggest heroes is a guy named Gary Vanderchuk. Mm -hmm. And I just saw, saw him spoke in Vegas. And I was telling somebody, he's like, oh, that guy's such a snake. He's such a scam artist, whatever. And I'm like, he might be a scam artist to you, but he's completely changed my life. Yeah. Right. So like, it, whatever. It worked. It yeah. worked. It's it, your perspective. Yeah. Your perspective. Yeah. My perspective yeah. is that he changed my life. Exactly. So yeah. in your perspective, could be he's a scam artist. Great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What worked for you. Whatever yeah. worked for me worked for you. Like, yeah. it just doesn't even matter. Yeah. And I go, and the problem is, is that you're not opening your mind enough to understand like what he's telling you right well and you have to consider the source like exactly. if you're if you're like 
you know, saying, oh, this person is a scam artist and you're just not advancing yourself, then mm -hmm. really you're just deflecting in order to take it off of the fact that you're doing nothing. I Absolutely. think lack of action. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's deep. It's lack of action, man. I think that's the number one flaw that people have is lack of, I don't think people yeah. process how much action it actually takes to be successful. Right. right. Or yeah. how much action it actually takes to get something done. Yeah. And nobody it, can do it for you. And nobody. No, no book mm -hmm. can solve it. Nothing. That's why That's why I want to give the power to the people. Like, yeah. I don't need the um, this new avenue of counseling that I'm getting into. I don't need that economically. I need that to give to other people so that they can, like, free themselves a lot mm -hmm. of their own bondage that we've just conveniently celebrated as mental illness. Yeah. I don't celebrate mental illness. I find it very, you know, um, unfortunate that we've embraced it so dearly and, and crippled so many people to be stuck on their phones and feel like they can't and that they want something someone else has when they have everything within themselves to do mm -hmm. it. Huh. So that's, that would be like my, my big thing. And I wanted to say even too, with, with what you guys were talking about with mm -hmm. like trends and shoes and things like that, mm -hmm. when we traveled a lot with the kids when they were young, I found it really interesting. Like my middle daughter is from the get go, two years old, she opened a drawer and her eyes got big, like fashion is her thing. Yeah. She mm -hmm. knows how to put something together mm -hmm. where my middle, I mean, my youngest and I are just kind of like, whatever. I just throw a gray t-shirt on. <laughs> What's that? I just throw a gray t-shirt on yeah. all the time. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I wear the same, like, I'm like, I'm gonna buy seven shirts. These, are, these will last me for three months. And then we'll go through another seven, seven shirts. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. She knows how to do it. And she has that eye for style and design, but um, it was really interesting to go and travel when we went to Israel and the kids were young probably like a little over 10 years maybe 12 years ago or something um uh my son had noticed that nobody had like we all had and they were in school too the same shoes you know all the kids had vans or mm -hmm. converse or yeah. whatever you had the vans people the converse people mm -hmm. like the, that aspect and he was like well that's really interesting because like Everybody's just kind of wearing whatever, you know. There is well, no and just, like and trends, and they know? don't and they don't care because they it's something care. they don't even focus about. It's like an American thing, so you have to make it a personal thing to not care so yeah. much about that and not care like. That's another one also, is if you don't have a label within schools for our younger generation who doesn't know the world before technology, yeah. they have nothing to go back to. And they've, it, something, some way and somehow they have to kind of resonate within themselves that like, it, the, the trends change so much. So to try and keep up with them is impossible. It's impossible. It's, it's business. Yeah. I mean, one of my mm -hmm. best friends is a fashion designer for Hollywood and it's business. Each year you have to have a new color, new trend. Which yeah, because they want to sell more stuff. Yeah, sell more stuff. It's all business. Madonna, yeah. mm -hmm. she's like, you know, a brilliant business woman and she would never let her kids watch her stuff. So it's, it, we have to make that decision personally on what mm -hmm. we allow ourselves to receive consume consume mm -hmm. and become rather than become ourselves yeah you know? it's funny uh andrew short who's a comedian i don't know if you guys listen to him but he brought up like when everyone's freaking about tiktok like how tiktok was controlled by china and he's like they're not trying to steal our information he goes but what do they do tiktok makes things in our society popular mm -hmm. that don't help us grow as a society shaking butts hot chicks whatever he goes you go over to china he goes the tiktok algorithm there is smarts scientists things yeah. that make you want to become a better person to bring more to the society mm -hmm. he goes that's how we're getting yeah. bamboozled right now that's what's wearing us down Very is like yeah. making the youth thinking that that is cool when that's yeah. not bringing anything new to society mm -hmm. right yeah. yeah yeah and we've uh, i mean there's a crazy amount of the youth and adults that are just um the psych meds or it, i mean it's just it, it's hard not to address just because it's like the number one business in our society so oh, it's numbing sure. people mm -hmm. you know to where they don't really have the ability to deflect that and think as rationally because it's just that's what it does it essentially numbs you to even care mm -hmm. so you know maybe you need that for a season but it's not necessarily uh it's not something that should be a lifestyle yeah i've never done a drug before so i don't no, know never neither. in my life no nothing no. The only time I've ever, because the same thing, I haven't been, um, I can't speak for something I haven't experienced yeah. and I got to be careful of that mm -hmm. with having gone to, and one of um, my former students when she uh, tragically um, was killed, she was four years old and her mom showed up at the funeral and it was terrible and her mom was on something to be able to show up. But mm -hmm. man, the difference that she made after, she used him for a season to get through that and mm -hmm. she went around to every school and barricaded all the, uh, made sure all the school safety walls in that county were were intact and had mm -hmm. she 
continued to numb herself, she wouldn't have made such a great yeah. difference, you know? Yeah. So I can't say that it's, uh, I wouldn't speak that way to say no, but definitely 100% I can say you don't need it for a lifestyle. Yeah, I think 100%. it's something, I think there, I think it's about, like you said, I think anything is good in moderation. Yes, yeah. Moderation is the most important thing. Yeah, Absolutely. and it's such a lucrative business right now that it's just unfortunately, um, and it's, uh, it's advertised. Uh, everything is, you know, you can always find a cure and a pill. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, especially, I mean, even with anything, <laughs> even with work, it's success. Like, it's all in Marta. Like, you have to, like, yeah. pace yourself. You have to, like, so you don't do burnout. Yeah, and yeah. priorities, like you Absolutely. were saying with your family. Like, Absolutely. Like wrapping and, yeah, same yeah. thing with us. It's like, we'll eat rice and beans, if if that. Like, I'm not going to sacrifice family. So what's important to you? Right, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And mental health should be very important because it's kind of like love yourself as you love others. But, well, love others as you love yourself, which is kind of an, a, a flip there. You know, love others as yourself. You have to love yourself in order to See, love yeah. others. See, that's wow. funny you say that. I think every person should be the most selfish person they, in the yeah, world. Yeah, because they can right. give so because much. Because they can give so much. Yeah. Grant yeah. Cardone says, poor people are the most selfish people in the world. And people yes. are like, what? And they're like, why? I'm like, as if I'm poor, I can only worry about myself. Yeah. And I can only worry what's in a hand reach of myself. I can't help anyone else. He goes, me, I have to be so selfish so that I can build all of this and I can have all these employees and I can give all these people jobs and all these things. Yeah. Like, if I was poor, that's being selfish. Right. You know, yeah. even though people probably look at me and be like, you're oh, limiting. you're limiting yeah. yourself you're limiting and how yourself. many people you can truly help. You can only, right. you can barely help yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. You're actually taking from others. Mm-hmm. Right. When... If you're, if you focus on yourself first, I think moms really mess that up. If I have to throw a, I'm not a therapist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a real estate agent. We just talked about that. I'm yeah. a real estate agent, yeah. not a mom. But like, I, I see a lot of moms, even my mother, I tell her all the time, I'm like, you need to worry about yourself first right. and then worry about dad and yep. then worry about us because right. if you're not taken care of, Right. Then we're not taking care. Then, then you're yeah. going to be unhappy, yeah. and then right. that unhappiness is going to pass off to us, and then yeah. unpass, like right. worry about yourself. And I think yeah. too many moms are like, I got to put everyone in yeah. front of me. Right. Yeah. Like that's, it is. It's rough. Right. It's rough. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and especially having a son, that I think was my biggest thing. Uh, and I'm I'm going to be a grandma in like two months. So Whoa, super cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Grand, look like a grandson grandma, on the oh, way. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a grandson on the oh. way. Um, but I think that, you know when I look back, you know, there's those things that you could sit there and beat yourself up for. But I think we need to be our biggest cheerleader. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, and I think one of the biggest things that I I I feel as if I did well because I understood the psychology, I guess, is having sons, like a mother and a son, it's you know, essentially like a father and a daughter, it's their first love, you know, yeah. and a mother and a son first love. So, mm-hmm. but you have to be able to let that go. I remember when my son was little and I'd look at him and go, I am raising you for two other women, yeah. your right. wife and her mom. Right. You know? And so you can be good to both. Yeah. And it's it was phenomenal to actually have my daughter-in-law when they, you know, were, a year or so in maybe i don't know exactly but she had thanked me for raising such a good son and i was like oh, she sees it you know? yeah all <laughs> my I, hard and, work paid off yeah, yeah and you have to let them go so even on social media it's weird to like right. i want to just like brag about my kids all the time but i'm like hey am i allowed to post this you know yeah <laughs> can i say this See, my mom really my mom cute, knows my know? mom knows the rule no posting yeah <laughs> my mom knows my mom doesn't even tag me and stuff like yeah. just because it's just i like having the separation yeah. absolutely you yeah. know what i mean i just because i don't the moment i go on there and thinking that world is my life right that's when i get trapped yeah absolutely yeah. you know absolutely. what i mean but i also yeah. it's all about one thing on there you know what you what have mean? to be yeah. on all the time too. yeah for sure that's why i have two phones yeah, I, yeah. the two phone thing was a big deal for me yeah, yeah. like I, when i go to bed my work phone doesn't go in the room with me i don't check emails no notifications that's no nice nothing. Yeah. yeah i love that's it that's good that's yeah. that's what i try to teach young people at my age it's like i gotta do this i gotta work i gotta be on uh, it's like yeah. dude just chill just chill. like <laughs> even right now like i while we've been in here someone texts me a new yeah. lead was like i got your number from so and so we're looking at and i'm yeah. like okay nice like yeah. i'll get back yeah. to them if you can't wait 35 minutes for me then right. you're not gonna want to work with me yeah Absolutely. yeah i I'm always sorry. flip my phone upside down when we go to dinner or anything yeah. like that unless i know i have a horse sick or like my kids are in a yeah. big, my one's flying a plane and it's like phone up you know yeah <laughs> exactly make, well, what am i gonna do to save her at that point but you know i agree i agree <laughs> but yeah and i raised my kids also with very limited that we didn't have cable they were raised on probably everything i was raised on mork and mindy and yeah. brady bunch and you know <laughs> yeah. wonder I mean, woman they yeah. played you know those kind of things where all the share the shows that the were classics. their time yeah 
Uh, the show Happy Days, the shows at their time, they were kind of like, uh, I don't know, but have you seen Mork and Mindy? Have you, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't even watch TV now, so yeah. other than the Kardashians. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. I'm trapped. I'll tell you what, those people are really good at what they do. Uh, oh, they are yeah. really good at what they do. They do. The, I mean, I give they're them, geniuses, they're geniuses. Man. The mom's a the, genius. The, she's a She's the, the mafia. Biggest genius of the She's mall. the mafia. <laughs> like, I haven't seen any of it. Oh, Kai oh I don't, but I, I just on. know of them. <laughs> uh, and they are just marketing geniuses. Yeah. It's so. It, they, I mean, they're famous for what? Exactly. 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 <laughs> but, well, but, but here's the thing, that's and that's, that's the greatest part they're, about it. That's, that's the most inspiring thing about right. it. Right. Yeah. Is that they're, if you know if you know how to play the game. Yeah. yeah. There's no reason you can't be successful. There's no doubt in my mind that they're the hardest working. They are hard Yeah. But. The, the only issue is they're pretty, so that kind of helps them out. Yeah. That yeah. that is this. I will say that that and anything in life now, if you are pretty, it's you helpful. you have a leg up on very everyone helpful. else in this industry. Yeah. It's in, very in this helpful. World. And that's not discrimination. It just means that you take care of yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, which listen, is essential. Essentials. You eat right. Like, yeah. listen, I'm trying to lose weight right now, and people laugh at me because of that. That's the other part. I'm losing weight. Oh, why yeah. do you need to lose weight? But like, that's the thing. Is like being healthy is hard. Yeah. 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 Lo- it being takes in sh- work. being in shape is hard. Oh, it's absolutely. so tough. You know. Absolutely. The worst is when they go, "Oh, you're lucky." Uh, no. It's no, it's not. a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, guys, I gotta wrap this yes, up. Absolutely. I appreciate you both coming in, guys. Make Thank sure you, you uh, keep an eye out. Obviously, when this books drop, you know I'll be posting about it. Absolutely. So I'm looking forward awesome. to reading 26 pages. If it's 27, I'm not going that much longer okay (laughs) so uh i appreciate you guys man it's uh it's always fun to have people in here with different conversations it's kind of i think that's the thing that i want people to start realizing start having conversations yeah Yeah. with people right or wrong believe or not conversation is what really helps us grow as people so yeah thank you you. thanks guys until next time guys peace